Red Talk Show. Jazz Red Talk Show, and I'm your host, Jazz Red. Uh, Y'all usually don't see me in front of my show, but uh, I wanted to do a shout out to my baby sister, Nadine. Nadine Boot. Nadine is my biggest fan. She is in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Uh, always sharing everything I put on. When I'm when I'm on my uh, when I have YouTube on, she's on the live chat and she's typing in phone numbers and addresses for me because she's she she work at home and she types. She can do that. I can't. I want to thank you, my baby sister Nadine. Thank you. Because I mean, whenever I was down or up, you was always with me. And you know I love you, Nadine. Nadine Boot, that's my baby girl. All right. This is what my uh my daughter told me I need to do. Uh, come on my show and tell y'all that I got a YouTube. I'm going to want y'all to take your phone out, go to YouTube. And if you, you're older like me, get your grandchildren, take that phone out, go to YouTube. I want you to pull up the, T-H-E, the Jazzy Red Talk Show. I've been on YouTube 13 years. I've been on TV 14 years. But I just don't promote me. I be so busy promoting other folks. In the beginning, I was working in the shipyard. Y'all know I'm a retired lady welder, 44 years. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I didn't think I'd do that. My daughter talked me into that. I cried like a baby. I didn't want to go. But anyway, when you go to uh, YouTube, I want you to go to The Jazz of Red Talk Show. Pull it up and uh, subscribe. I want you, I got to read it, okay? I want you to like subscribe and hit the bell the little bell when i come on it'll let you know huh it'll let you know jazz is gonna come on it'll come a little early but y'all just be a little patient with me and come back i don't want you to miss anything on my show i have a lot of people that i put over my show over the 14 years i love all of you all even if some of you might have fell out with me i don't even care i was too busy to not even work business people don't worry about stuff like that we have to go on all right so you hit the like, you hit the like, share, and 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 look, I'm filming me moving, man. Let me call you back, cause you coming on, y'all. He just called me. He's coming on right after I speak. Let me call you right back, Mac. Okay. <laughs> they gonna y'all gonna know his voice, but he's coming on right behind me. He got a movie and a book out. Go to YouTube, okay? Go to YouTube, the Jazz Red Talk Show. And, and, and like, share, and subscribe, and hit that live button. Um, this show, all my shows mean a lot to me, but this is a public awareness. He just had called, because I had called him. This is a public awareness. You all have got to, please share, share this video on YouTube, and, and call your friend and say, get on, get on here. And Jazz got somebody talking. Uh, he lives in Atlanta, and uh, it's a public awareness. He's trying to stop some things that been going on in the churches, okay, for a long time. Uh, who can tell it better than someone that has been through it? So we're going to straighten this thing out in 2024. It's the year of exposure. and. Uh, I want to thank my buddy for uh, telling me that. He said, this is the year of exposure. Jesse Walker told me this. Um, be careful of what you do. Help people. You got a neighbor, check on it. Don't be saying, oh, the government need to do this. The government always doing that. We always point finger. Mama said, when you point finger, you got three pointing right back at you, huh? That one now, three to you and one up to go, okay? Because I can, I can always say this. I can always say this. Mom gave me that wisdom, okay? So what I want you to do is we're going to help take care of each other. Somebody in your neighborhood, you're going to help them, okay? All right. We're going to get back to this YouTube channel. I have not promoted me. So make sure y'all got that phone up and put on, go to the, T-H-E, the Jazzy, J-Z-Z-Y, Red, R-E-D, skip, talk, then show. Okay, pull it up. This this show here uh, mean a lot to me, and it mean a lot to the young man that got a book and a movie published. He lives in uh, New Orleans, but I tell you what, we finna get ready to do. 
y'all know we finna go on with the show. Don't forget to to say our jazz red scribble thing. <laughs> uh, uh, when you oh okay, uh, this is my old saying. What you see is what you get. Talk to them to see if they legit. Jazz red, we love you. Uh, and 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 I I'm just blessed, man. I'm just blessed. I'm a business woman, and I have a book published too. So at any time that I can try to help some people. Now, Jazz is selling commercials now. If you want to call, uh, get a commercial, call and uh, we'll talk. 251-776-0401. Who best to buy a commercial from? From a lady that was just was free for 14 years. Gone, gone, gone. 14 years. Hmm. Who best to buy a commercial from? from a lady that been cutting trees down off people's houses and climbing up. Because I worked in the shipyard, it didn't bother me. Putting top on their house, trying to make sure they're secure. Jazz Red, we love you. Go to the Jazz Red Talk Show. I love you all, and y'all know I can't leave without saying. <laughs> My favorite thing, Jazz Red, we love you. Peace out. Talk Show, and I'm your host, Jazz Red. We've got an important dignitary here tonight. Uh, what's your name, young man? My name is Matt Hardiman. Matt Hardiman. Uh, Matt has a book and a movie out. When I seen that on Facebook, I jumped right on. I said, I got to share this. What's the name of your movie and your book? Well, well what's the name of the book? Uh, the book is titled Pulpit Gangster, okay. Life Inside a Cult. Okay. Uh, you want and to the movie is is titled. Uh, it was it was actually um, it stems from the book. Okay. Uh, titled Pulpit Gangster. Pulpit Gangster. When I seen that that oh, that made me want to look at that. That made me want to see that. And a man standing there with the suit on and the necklace. Uh, tell us uh, tell us something about your uh, your book or your movie. However you want to start it. This your thing. You do it the way you want to do it. Well, I mean, it's just. Uh... I guess, um, you know, I, um, I used to, I was born and raised, um, inside of a, a cult. Um, it was a situation that took place, um, pretty big story, uh, that did take place, um, uh, in the news in Atlanta involving this cult. Um, and, um, it was quite a bit of uh, abuse, abuse. Um, that was taking place mm -hmm. um, by the the leader of this cult um, that that was considered to be or called himself a pastor. Wow! Um, it was uh, sexual abuse, um, sex trafficking, uh, kidnapping. Wow! Uh, just it was a whole bunch and. Myself, uh, I was used um, as a sex slave in this environment by this cult leader uh, because he had a deranged way of thinking and he wanted to, uh, he was uh, desiring to build a mega church. And, and so his idea was to force the youth, the young people such as myself, to mate and to bring children into his congregation. And I actually, um, I, I had nine children in that environment. Wow. How did he, so you were, uh, you were brainwashed? Yes, I was, um, because, um, in this environment, we were taught that this man was, was like God to us. And, and whatever he says, and you see, my parents, they raised me in this environment. They were the ones who taught me that whatever he says, you don't question. You just, you just do it. If he, if he says to you, you know, uh, you need to run, you only ask how fast. Are That's you kid? Are you kidding? Yes. Wait a minute. Your mother told you to do whatever he said. Yes, and, and my dad as well. And your dad. Yes. Your mother and your father. Well, yes. were they into this cult or church, whatever it was? Were they, were they into it a long time? Your mother and your yes. father? Yes. 
Yes, actually, mm. believe it or not, my 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 dad was uh, one of the. Uh, he was uh, one of the main ones that that helped set up this this church. Wow! Uh, along with the cult leader. Wow! So they they started it out um, together. Oh my grace! So you were told to do anything that that leader said do. Yes. I, mean, I hate to say pastor, but pastor, leader, whatever he said do, you had to do. Yes. As yes. a kid uh, coming up, that made you think it was okay? Because you're a child. You're just yes. doing, wow. Yes. And then, and I mean, I, I, I did not, like, I'll say this. When I was being forced to meet with this young girl, Okay. I was only 17 years old. And um and I lost my virginity. And I was because I mean <laughs> kicking and screaming. Kicking and screaming because I felt like first of all it was already I, at that time I, I it was a a, a young lady there young girl there that i i i, I liked okay. already yeah. and and i was very much so interested in and we were you know um together at that time and you know in that environment you don't get a chance to choose what to be with wait a he minute he picks and choose he picks and chooses who you're going to be with and and, and tells you who you're going to mate with. So even if you're with somebody or whatever the case is, or you have someone that you're interested in, or maybe even in the relationship with, he's going to separate it. Oh, no. I'm, I'm so and sorry. And then he'll tell yeah. you who, who you're going to mate with. Uh, well, I'm so sorry you had to uh, go through that. You, you like someone else, and he told you you had to be with, huh? Okay. Wow. Yes. Wow. And you stayed a virgin to 17. Yes. Trying to do right in the church. Yes. And then he make you do something that's against what's in that Bible. So, um, wow. Tell me some other things that uh, went on in that church that uh, or that cult. That how, how did he get all these, it was family, mother and father, and then they bring their children, they make their children stay, and how did that even come about? It's like, a, I don't know, I, I'm i kind of blown with what this. What he would do is, he would find people that were, um, he would find people that were strung out on drugs, mm -hmm. or they had a, an, an alcohol addiction, or they were into prostitution, or, or they were underprivileged some kind of way, uh, or they their lives was you know was just not so great at that time. And he would find people that were damaged, um, and then he would offer them a better way. He would say, you know, this is this is it. You know, you I, you worried about you know your bills yeah. or your how you going to survive or mm. you want to be able to get off of the street and stop hustling and all these things, come over here and join up with us. We'll take care of whatever your needs are. Wow. You know, if you need money, we got you. Oh. If you, you know, if you need a house or a car or whatever, we got you. And, um, that's, that's how he lured them in. He was playing and on their vulnerability. They wanted to do better. They wanted to uh, get off drugs or do. They seen he was telling them that he can show them a way to come back and have things going the right way in life. And they didn't know that they were uh, joining a cult or getting into something that they weren't going to like later on. Absolutely. So he treated Absolutely. them kind in the beginning. He treated them kind in the beginning. Yes. Wow. Yes, but it was all a way of it was a, a, a it was basically manipulation, um, and and so once they once he gets you into it, that's when you start seeing uh, the 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 control, 
and you start seeing that that type of uh, uh, of power and and and, and uh, domineering behavior. And whereas you know, it's like now now that you're here, I control you. Wow. And now and then that's when you start seeing all of the abuse. That's when you start seeing. You know, because once he gets the the, the 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 adults involved, and then if they have children, he would take their children and start forcing them to mate with each other, with other children. Yeah. And so, it, and and then and so, I have witnessed like he would take young girls, um, you know. 14 year old girls and force them to 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 mate with guys he would take them across state lines oh no and force them to mate with older guys come on and they would be you know kicking and screaming you know crying saying this is not it this is not what I want this is this, this is that. You don't have a choice. No, he didn't. You don't have a choice. And, <laughs> you're, and your own parents, they would be the ones who would be forcing you right along with this cult leader. Oh, my gracious. Oh, my gracious. So the key and is, if you ever decided that you that you you think that you know this is not it, and I want to get out of this environment, he would he would have you physically abused. Wait a minute, just beat. Yes. Oh my gracious! I've seen that happen even to my own mom, my own biological mom, by my dad, uh, because she tried to leave at one point. Um. You know, this was some years ago, yeah. and um, and and he he told her, told him to beat her with the belt. Told your father to beat your mother. Yes. And your father did that. Is it? Um, yes. Look, I had. I, I watched it. I watched it. At, I was around about, uh, I would say about seven or eight years old. Yeah. You're a kid and you're watching your father beat your mother from a command from another man. Yes. That's supposed to be a man of God. Right. Okay, now I'm 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 really mad. I hadn't seen this movie, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I wanna let you know I hadn't seen it, uh, but I'm going to watch it after I interview him. I wanted to interview him first and from what he's telling me, uh one of my buddies said, I just seen it, Red, I seen the movie. He said, Red, you wouldn't you wouldn't dare put up with that. You man, you be <laughs> I say, well, it it was a thing where we got to see how they got in there. So now you're telling me how they they were vulnerable and they thought they were getting help, you know. Right. Wow. He right. got them at their lowest point. Many of them, uh, the young people there were being molested even by this cult leader. Okay. Too. Mm -hmm. um, and in addition in addition to him being uh, the cult leader being a child molester, okay. there were other child molesters there as well. And I'm talking about they, they molested young, like really young babies even. Come on, man. And I'm talking about from the ages of like of, of 14 months old. No, no. And up. No. Wow. Yep, there's one one particular child molester. He molested about fifteen or more children. Oh my gracious! In that environment, and 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 one of which involved one of my my daughters as well. Wait a minute. You had a daughter, and they uh, abused your daughter. Yes. Okay. Um, that wasn't okay with you. Uh, are you were brainwashed to think this is this is the no, way it go? No. Okay. That was the that was a part of 
I would say my turning point. Okay. Um, because okay. I wanted him dead. Okay. For what he did. What he did. And I wanted to kill him myself. Okay, I could understand that. I can understand that, young man. So I, um, I um I felt like after watching like so much abuse of people, just I mean, even myself being abused and then even like watching a pregnant woman get beaten with the belt because, you know, he said that she said something to him that he didn't like. And watching men, grown men, get beaten with belts. And then even myself getting beaten with a belt wow. from a young person. Mm -hmm. And then just being forced to, to, to lose my virginity. And then watching and having to, to the fact and knowing that this just happened to my daughter. And then I'm thinking that he was going to, like, deal with this guy because he told us, oh, look, no, we, we got him. We gonna, I'm going to deal with him myself. So it was uh, like this guy he was... He didn't want nobody to go to the law. He didn't want nobody to, you know, he didn't want us to talk about it to, to the outside world. He was going to deal with this issue himself. Oh, okay, so it was like that wasn't supposed to happen, and I'm going to deal with him. And don't y'all right. go to the police. Don't don't tell nobody. Come on now. Huh? And, and, wow. he, did, and he did not wow. He did not do nothing. He didn't do anything. But encourage what he did was a shame and a disgrace. Wow. He actually, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to say this, um, uh, Take a minute. Take he a minute. said mm -hmm. that he had an answer for the child molester. And he told us and told him right in front of everybody in the congregation that he seems to have a thing for little girls, the JJs. Okay. Okay. And he said that his answer would be to him that he's going to give him one of those young ladies in there so that he can experience an adult for J.J. Okay, okay. And that way he may not bother the children. Oh, man. And that was supposed to cure him. That was going to cure him. Wow. I, I kid you not. And do you know what he also said? Wow. He said that it wasn't just the child molester's fault. He said it was the children's fault. They wanted that to happen to Oh, them. my gracious. Oh. I, 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 I promise you, if wow. I ever, if I ever, ever, at any point, Wanted somebody to be dead. Yes. That was my moment. I, I understand. I understand. Um, how long, how long did this? Uh, I knew it was it was going on before you. I mean, how long did this go on, man? I mean, I'm seeing you saying you were young, seventeen, seventeen. So you were in there when you were younger? Well, he was grooming me okay. from from a, a young boy. Okay. Even when I was younger, he was grooming me and trying to, he was basically trying to get me to take his position. What? He wanted me to be like him. Okay. Because he felt like I was talented, I was gifted, I had certain abilities. Um, and so... He wanted to use me in his program. Wow. He felt like that I I I represented him well. Wow. 
you are you are a nice looking man. I know the uh, my TV viewers are looking at your pictures. Uh, how did the rep was the Reverend nice looking? Uh, to me, he was an ugly looking. Man. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. spiritually, yeah, he was ugly. Okay, he was a demonic man. Oh he was wow, an evil old man, an older man. Yes. Oh wow. So he he was ugly both ways. To okay. Me. I was I was trying to see what would make uh, the women, the mothers stay out because sometimes they like nice looking preachers, you know. Uh, I was wondering what would make them. Uh, I know it's a forcible thing too. Uh, it was they were they were. I would say um, you, you know how um. Some people, believe it or not, um, they 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 are attracted to power. Okay, okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. And so when they see, and, and truth be told, and I'm just gonna say, a lot of these, quote unquote, not all. I'm not talking about all, but a lot of these, quote unquote, pastors or bishops or apostles or leaders. Yes. Ain't nothing but a bunch of gangsters, a bunch of crooks, a bunch of pimps. Wow. And some of these members flock to these type people because they love the fact that, 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 that it's almost like they, they, they admire. Wow. Wow. The, 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 the fact that they're able to be controlled. Wow. <laughs> uh. they, they, they even put these crooks before the most high. Before, uh, that's what I was going to, uh, you know, I'm thinking like, uh, how do you love a man more than you do Jesus? You know, the right. Lord, how do you, how you love him more than anything? You ain't supposed to love him more than you love your children. But how can you love that man that's not doing right? How you love him more than you do God? How you do that? How you do that? Well, I, I, and the thing about it, guess what? How do they do I, But But I was guilty okay. of idol worshiping myself. I understand. Because that's what we were taught. To uplift this person as if I, we were told that that he's like God to us. Wow! This is like God to us. Oh. This is our God. Oh! So I was, I, I, and I know that many people are doing this when they go to these 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 churches. A lot of times, they're not really going there to uplift the Most High. I'm talking about those who are not. Yeah. They're going because they love fame. They love the attention. They love the fact that how he's dressed. Wow. How he, you know, he's prestigious. He's this, he's that. He has charisma. Wow. So it's not really them going to hear what thus saith the Lord. Come They're on. going to hear what Bishop so and so is it has to say. Doctor, Apostle, this, that, and the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they change all these names. Some of them go from bishop to pastor to preacher to uh, yes. I don't know what to call them, okay? Uh yes. yeah, back in the day I had a bad mouth. I'd be the told customer see it something else. But we are, we know, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that we know there are some good pastors. Some really, really good pastors, and especially the ones with them smaller churches. They really try to save souls. That is, isn't that what they were supposed to be doing, young man? Saving souls, bringing people to the Lord, not that bringing is, them to them. That is, that is, yes, that yeah. is what it's supposed to be. But I know for, from from firsthand experience, and my and being in an environment like that. I was taught and I was even getting my own hands dirty because of this man. I was doing things. I mean, I'm talking about illegal things. 
I understand. That was not right. But you you were brainwashed. You he he just controlled people's mind. It's like he uh was hypnotizing you or something. Uh. Well it was. That that's exactly what it was. Um and I I feel bad. Like I feel bad even like looking back on this. Like No I feel like yeah. I wasn't even a real man. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I feel like I was like a woman. No, okay, but let me tell you, you were feeling like we women. Okay, we women, we get married, we'll we'll have a, a husband, and then we uh, similar to submit. I don't like using that word, but we we go to work, we clean up, we come back, we cook, and it's like if he cheat, uh, we find out something is not right. Wow, that's a blow. So I understand. I understand when you're in this thing, you're thinking, well, okay, this, and then you notice, then you find out, uh-oh, wait a minute. Now, you, that, what it was, you you were uh, blind, and then you seen the light, young man. You seen the light. Yeah. Now, how did you, how did you uh, get out? How, I mean, because they beat you, and how in the world did you get out? I, 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 I like I was saying about my, my daughter. Um, okay. That was just the last straw for me. Okay. Um, because I couldn't bear it. Like I couldn't do that. I couldn't I could I couldn't do that. Knowing that my own child just got molested. Wow. You talking about around the age of five or six years old, are you crazy? Wow. And I couldn't bear it. I couldn't bear it, and then he molested so many other children. And How? all I knew to do, I said, either I'm going to kill this man, take his life. I, I know then that I'm going to, I'm going to go to prison. But it's either I kill this man. go to prison or I take him to the law. Okay. Okay. And try to get some kind of justice that way. And 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 and, and because I felt like my mind was t what I was thinking was in order for my children, all nine of them, to have any kind of way to escape this environment, I was like their only hope. Wow. So it's like if I if I was put away okay then they were doomed. Okay. You start so thinking, it's yeah. Like, I, I, it's like that was the, the position I was in. Okay. If I did not, if I, if I, if, if I kill this man, mm -hmm. they're gonna lose me regardless. That's right. That's right. And and then now I'm in prison for many years, and then they're stuck. Okay, you right. Okay. Cause, because nobody else, nobody else was fighting for them. Nobody else. I did not want them to go through what I went through, the hell that I suffered, the hell that I experienced okay. in that environment. I felt like even if it cost me my own life, that I was willing to do whatever I had to do so that they okay. could have at least some chance okay. or some opportunity to a normal life. Wow. So. And that's what I did. That's what I, you did. I went to the law and, hmm. and uh, had them prosecuted. Wow. And I was, I was, um, Take your time. You, um, 
And 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 when you go to court, it's like you're just living things all over again because everything got to come out. I yeah, I went to court and it was a battle, a long battle. I was fighting and fighting and fighting. I was crying out to to people. I mean, just everywhere, just saying, help me, help me, help me. Somebody help me rescue my children. Somebody help me get these children out of this environment. Wow. I even tried to rescue my children's mom, but she she refused. She told me that, you know, she was staying loyal to the cult leader. Yeah, oh, man. And told me, yeah, she told me that, I no, she, she refused to go with me. Um, you know, call me all types of names, of course, and even encourage my own children to call me names and throw clothes at me and everything. Oh, yeah. And I, but I endured, I stayed, I stuck, I, I still had, I knew I had to fight. If I, if, if I could do nothing else, I had to fight because to be honest with you, when I got out of that environment, I didn't even want to live no more. I even lost faith at one point wow. in the most high in Jesus Christ didn't even believe no more period wow. and I hated the fact if I ever heard anybody talking about Jesus or God or I just felt like <laughs> where was God when I needed him when if, this, if this is true that there is this God why did he allow me to be to be abused all of those years? Why did I suffer like I did? Why did so many other children suffer like we did? Wow. And, and I didn't want to live no more. You didn't want to live? Wow. I gave up on life. I was just like a, a shell of a person, a shell of a man. Just existing, but not not living. Wow! And I was at a very, 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 very bad time of my life. And but all I knew, the only thing I could, I could come up with at that time, okay, was I had to go back and fight for them, those children, because they didn't ask, they didn't ask to be here. You're right. And they came from me. So I knew that, and if I could just fight for them, I felt like then that would be, it would be worth it for me, for what I endured. And and, and I did, I went and fought and, and I did, I, I won custody of all nine of them. Wow. Yep. You got custody of your kids. Mm-hmm. And then, and after I won custody of them, oh man, eventually a little, uh, uh, prior, my, as a matter of fact, prior to me winning custody of them, um, the most high, <laughs> the one that I, the yeah. one that I thought was not even real. Wasn't even real, huh? The one that I gave up on. Wow visited me no yes i'm saying no but yes he did wow and he showed me and he spoke to me and talked to me and 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 and, and he kept giving me i kept having dreams and visions wow that's how he dealt with me through dreams and visions and and i kept he would show me things before it happened and then it would happen just like he showed it to me. And I kept seeing it. And I was like, wait a minute, but who would know this before it happened? Wow. I didn't know it. You didn't know it, girl. And I, nobody told me. And and, and and so, and eventually he, he presented himself to me and, and showed me that I didn't even know him for who he was. Wow. He showed me that I was looking to man as my God. And because that man failed me, I said that God was not real because that man was not real. Wow. I gave him his credit 
when I found out that he was a fake. He was a phony. He was a gangster. But I didn't know the most high for who he really was. And when he presented himself to me, he restored my faith and renewed my faith in him. And he he renewed my faith in Jesus and Christ. Yeshua, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. It felt like 10,000 bricks lift off of you, didn't it, young man? Yeah. I feel, I've yeah. had that feeling. It felt like 10,000 bricks just lifted off of you. Yep. Yes, it did. And you started yes, walking then. And, and I felt <laughs> like, even now, like, even now, yes. like, I feel like I can't get back certain things. Like, I, I can't get back my virginity. I lost that. Okay. In that environment, taken from me, it was stolen from me against my wishes. Okay. I can't do undo that. But in all of the other abuse, just, you know, being used as a sex slave and all of these other things that I've experienced, I, the only thing I can see now with my life is that if I can just take all of my pain and that's what I've done and just all of the pain that I've endured and just use that now and, and I turn it into my purpose, into my passion to try at least to help somebody somewhere somehow so that they either if they if they are either currently going through what I've already experienced or they're getting ready to go into those type of experiences or just they're just trying to find out a way to cope or to 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 manage Or to process what they've had to endure. And, or even hope in hopes to prevent somebody from going through any of this. That's why I, I, I use my pain to try and help them. To help them. And that's why I, I wrote... That's why I wrote that book, because it came from me hurting, because I felt like if I could just tell somebody, if I could just tell somebody what happened to me, yes, even if I died, even if somebody did some harm to me and they took my life and they came for me, I wanted somebody to know this is what happened. This is my truth. This is my story. They're not alone. That they're not alone and they don't have to. They don't have to submit. Wow. That's why I wrote that book, That's Pulpit right. Gangster. Pulpit Life Pulpit inside Gangster. a cult. Pulpit. I was hurting. Give me that the name from my pain. Well, give me the name of that book again. Pool Pit Gangster, Life Inside a Court. Life Inside a Court. That's why you wrote it. To help. Mm -hmm. to, to help. Yeah, and that was a way of healing, too. It was like, okay. it, was a, it was therapy, I should say, for okay. me. Because I don't believe, I don't believe you can really, mm, I believe when you go through certain types of abuse, you still feel pain. Uh, it's almost like you still you you don't forget that wow. it's like but you cope yeah you do with these things yeah you do in and order to I, I, and so I believe that writing that book was like a form of therapy for me 
Um, and I felt like at least I was able to talk about it. At least you, I, on, I feel you wholeheartedly because something in my book hurt me real bad when I was younger. And I wrote it. Once I put it on paper and got it published, oh, I felt 100% better. Right. I know what you're feeling. Right. 100% <sighs> better. 100% better. And not only did you do a book, well, how did you come up about, I'm going to do a movie? How did that come up? You know, that that that's, that's how that came about. It, it, it was, I felt like I, I then, after writing the book, I felt like I wanted to be able to tell the people visually, give them a visual. Okay. Of, 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 of the story. Wow. Uh, uh, of that book and of my life. Uh, uh, just, I wanted them to see it um, on the big, uh, big screen. Just, yeah. just see a picture of how that was. Not even being able to put it all, you know, in film format. But I wanted them to have have a, a visual of, of what I experienced and what I endured. And I felt like I I would be able to possibly, uh, because some people go by what they visually see. That's right. That's right. And that's, and that's why I did it. I, I yeah. And it's really a movement. Um, because I know that it's not just me. I know that there are others that are out there that, that have been abused, have been traumatized. Wow. And they're trying to figure out how to cope with this trauma. And, 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 and I'm telling you, some people, and I know that just like, you know, people that used to be involved in that environment that I was a part of, they... And it's sad to say, but many, even though that physically, maybe they have left that environment mentally, mentally, they're still there. And, 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 and you know, some of them have turned to, to drugs, prostitution, alcohol, um, you know. Wow. Um, yes, yes. You know, homosexuality or yeah. just whatever. Yeah. They they just, but what else? Like, what you, you left, what did you leave them? Look at, look at the condition you left them in. Wow. And they, and, 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 and they've resorted to, to <sighs> things that, that, that they, they really need to be delivered from. I know. And wow. I was a wreck myself. <laughs> I was a mental wreck. But, God. but the most high, he brought me back. But he God. restored me. Wow. And now I'm here to, to share my story and to, to try to help somebody else. You got the book. You got the movie. You did it, young man. You did it. You ain't like these other folks. I'm a gonna, I'm a gonna, I'm a gonna write, I'm a gonna, I'm a gonna do a movie. You did it. You pushed forward oh, through everything you went through. You pushed forward and you did it. You got that book published. Then you did a movie. Yeah. Okay, the, the movie, what is the name of the movie now? The movie is titled Pulpit Gangster. Mm hmm Pulpit Gangster. Yep. And it's, it's you know, it can be viewed. It, it, it's uh, streamed on Tubi right now. Okay, it's on Tubi right now. All Tubi of that is... Tubi right now. Right I'm, now. I'm, I'm going to watch it. Right now. I'm watching it. I'm going to watch it right after this interview. I got to drop someone out, but I'm going I'm come back and I'm going to watch it. Uh, I didn't want to watch it. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm like my TV viewers. They're going to watch it because just hearing what you went through, we want to see that movie. And and look, I told my daughter, she's ordering the book for my birthday. It's next week. Everybody and their mama, everybody and their mama need to watch this movie. They do. 
They do. They and do. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But no, you I, you I'm serious. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Because I mean, I'm blowed. I'm blowed. Everybody, <sighs> everybody, and their mom. Because it has been going. A lot of stuff in the church has been going on a long time. It really has. We're not talking to you, good churches. You churches that wholeheartedly love the Lord and trying to save souls. But these that are not doing right. Uh, this man has, this young man, Mr. Matt, has went through so much in his life. If we couldn't do nothing else but buy the book and watch the movie, at least watch that movie. And and I'm going to get the book because I, I speed read. I got to read that. We've got to get the book and we've got to watch the movie. Pure Pulpit Gangster. Pulpit yes. Gangster. Uh, how, yes. where, let them... Uh, Give them, give them again where they can pull that movie up at. Uh, it's on Tubi right now. It's, okay. it's streamed right now on Tubi. Everybody and their mama got to see this movie. You got to. Everybody. Everybody need to see it. Uh, because I, I believe, I believe in one way or another, you can relate. You can relate. One way or another. Okay. And, and 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 if you cannot, I believe you know somebody that possibly can. That possibly can. We're gonna we're gonna and 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 and, and, and that. Uh, it's okay. They gonna watch it. You ain't got to say no more. They finna watch this movie. We are we're about to run out of time, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a little something else to show before the uh, show is over with. Uh, Mr. Matt, I want to appreciate you so much. I, I'll say I want to appreciate you. I want to thank you so much for letting Jazz Red interview you and all her TV viewers to hear your story. Uh, you're a nice looking man. You're a good father. Uh, your kids are older now and I know they know about dad and and everything is, it all turned out okay and, and you're doing awareness. I asked him, I said, did you write, the, I asked him, I said, young man, did you write that book to get back at somebody and you got, he said, <laughs> I, he said, no. I wanted awareness. I wanted them to know. I, do, I wanted to stop it. But I also wanted exposure. Too. Okay. Okay. I still wanted I I still wanted them even to know that I am telling the world. Okay. I'm going to tell the world what and, you did to me. And you have. <laughs> and Trust I wanted me. that leader to know okay. that I'm telling the world what you did to me. And that's exactly why I wanted, in addition to bringing awareness, I wanted them to know that I am exposing so that, 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 that somebody could at least maybe grab hold to, 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 to the thought of saying, you know what, let me look around. And let me see if there's a way of safeguarding my babies. Okay, safeguarding. Let me see if there's a way of me trying to help prevent something from happening to mine. Okay. All right, Jeff. And so I have 10 children now. 10 kids. Well, look, <laughs> they're going to they gonna have to see that movie to fill, figure out the rest of this. We running out of time. But uh, I want to thank you for this interview, Mr. Matt. We love you. Thank you so much. You did it. Jazz Red, we love I you. I appreciate you, Jazz Red. <laughs> right. I really do. Jazz Red, <laughs> we love you. Peace.
In all my years of practicing medicine, I've never seen anything like it. The patient was pronounced deceased at the scene by two doctors. But some people came through. They were all dressed to like it. And they asked if they could pray for the man. All I can say is, it was a miracle. Yeah! I'm a witness. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Where everybody is somebody. Except you, Bill. Oh my God, it's my God, it's my God, it's my God, it's my God. It's my God. Yeah. I need you to come forth. It's my God, it's my God, it's my God, it's my God. Oh. Come and let us pray for them. Let's lay hands on them and pray for them and make them ready for the work that God has for them. John 316 Soul Services. I just keep hearing these voices. Leave me alone! Get away from me! Stop! We have a 316 in Pickneyville Park. All right, you witnesses, you heard us. Let's go. And I charge you in the name of Jesus. Come out of him, you devil, you. Negro, please. You got to come better than that. Where is God of Elijah? Witnesses, form the V. 